right, it's party time. It's Thursday. Let's get off the rails a little bit. My buddy Kyle Thompson, he's here. We're back. An Undaunted Life is the name of uh, the podcast. And uh, that's his new hat. Where can people get this hat? This you is like slick. That? It's got his logo on there. Thing pops, dude. Yeah, we actually like completely sold out of the hat. And then I just got flooded with emails for people to get it back. So that's Branded Bills. That's like the best it's snapback a great hat. that you can order. Look at that. Look at that. Do I have to wear your hat for the rest of the show? Is you don't have fit? to. Oh, well, so I'm look, see how big it is on your head. Okay, I'm a seven and a half. What, what size seven have you got? I think that's seven and five eighths. Seven and five eighths? How yeah. we look? It looks pretty good. What's up? <laughs> Let's go. The thing, that thing will wobble around on you, baby. The guys in the back love it. I'm keeping it. <laughs> I'm keeping it at least for the next hour. You know, listen, I got to say this for George and Brandon over there. They both have the best laugh. That sounds very gay of me to say. No, no, no. Right, but they have no, the they... best laugh. And I can sometimes, like, I wish we had an ambient mic. Because y'all have the mic you can turn on when you're talking. But I wish we had the ambient mic. That would pick up y'all's laughter more in the background. Can y'all just leave it on? Because it makes it makes me feel really special to hear y'all laugh whenever I talk. But both of those guys, it's like I know the show's going good if they're both laughing. So anyway, how you been, buddy? Been good, man. It's been a couple of years since I've been down here. But has it been uh, a couple of years? Or has it been, yeah. Has it been that long? Yeah, it's been a couple of years since Dang. the last time we get got down here. I mean, everything looks the same. Everything's still warm and cozy. It's and, convicting uh, to me that time flies that much and I don't know it. But can we talk about the fact that I was promised that I could sit on Forrest Gump's bench again, which was right outside the studio the last time I was here, Is but I didn't Forrest see Gump's it. bench still here? Where's is it, it in at? the back? I'm sure it's here somewhere. I, I don't know where they put it. Can you be more specific? Because I wasn't looking for the can it be somewhere. I needed to be like <laughs> where I can sit it. on it. Can we do it afterwards? Yeah, for those <laughs> of you wondering, so like when Forrest Gump at the beginning of the movie is sitting on the bench and mm. those are some nice shoes. Those are some comfortable shoes. You know, when he's sitting on the bu bus in Savannah waiting on the bus, Yeah, that bench is here. Right. Right. And so because Glenn somewhere said, hey, that's Forrest Gump's bench. Why don't I buy it? And so it's here along with other stuff it's probably stuck back there in the back with all the other props that's that's when you know you own way too much cool stuff is yeah. when like something that seems like unbelievably cool to like a regular person yeah. like me that they're just like oh yeah just toss it in the back with all the other stuff collecting dust There's like some, from history i've got some fun glenn stories on stuff like that like his eccentricities like when they were redoing the building and He's always redoing stuff, right? Mm -hmm. This this is an amazing building. If you walk through here, the lobbies and the offices and everything, it's like really cool. Everything's got a story behind it that's in, the, in here. And so much happened in this. This is the old Paramount Studios. You know, they filmed all the Barneys here, except for the first season. Dynasty was filmed here. RoboCop was exclusively filmed here for all their set stuff. Um, like the murals outside on the yeah. buildings, that's for the RoboCop movies. Oh, okay. Those murals that are out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. And so, uh, you know, JFK, Air Force One, a lot of stuff is done here. Prison Break, Walker, Texas Rangers, a lot of history here. And so you walk around, and I love telling those stories, and you, and you go to, from place to place to see all these things. Glenn was redoing. When he put his um, radio show, he moved it down to where he's at now. Mm. And they, these, they, you know those big open girders that you see outside, and they're all painted red? Yeah. He wanted his painted black on that end of the building. And one day he came in here, and they were painting them black, and he goes, that's the wrong shade of black. <laughs> I didn't realize. I, didn't realize no, I don't think anybody to, knew. Do we know what shade of black yeah, my know. shirt? Okay. I don't know, like, but compared. Glenn would tell you. Okay. So they had to repaint it all because Glenn was like, that's the wrong shade of black. It's like, that's actually midnight black. I was looking more for like <laughs> steel black or something like I need, that. I need downtown Philadelphia. He's. I'm not going to be able to concentrate. I'm not going to be able to do my show unless it's the right color black. That's Compton. I need Philly. Mm. You I'll know? let you get away with that joke. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I can get away with it because they hate me already. But um, disclaimer. Kyle didn't say it. Nope. Uh, but no, the eccentricities, or like when the 1947 Bentley showed up and he'd had it restored in Europe for like two years, and he calls Leno on the phone, and Jay Leno's like, don't put it on a boat because it'll get shaken, and then there's the salt water and all the stuff. You got to fly it over. You got to fly it over. So, I mean, when you got the money to fly over a 1941, to own a 1947 right. Bentley restored, and then you fly it over. So, But it's that, it's, that that makes Glenn Glenn though. It makes him Glenn. Like so, when you're talking to him, that's one thing. When I met him, you know, last last time I was here, I met him in the hallway, just you know, kind of yeah. you know, while he was going to the next thing. He's gonna have something in common 
with everyone he talks yeah, to because he owns a piece of history. So if you're a baseball guy, I was looking at his office. He's got these old baseball mitts and bats and things like that. If you're an old like yeah. battleship guy, he's got that big model in his office. And so like he owns something. Yeah, and you mentioned those things. You. Like that baseball glove probably, you know, belonged to Ty Cobb or something. Right. And that, that battleship you're talking about, mm. that was in the old Robert Mitchum miniseries Winds of War back in the early 80s. So that's a prop from okay. that deal. It's, everything's got a story around it. That's right. There. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, did have that, like, which again, I think it's cool because it's it's cool when you worked your butt off. You come from nothing. You, you've you been to the bottom like Glenn has, and you worked your butt off to to become something, and, and you become a, a radio I- Hall of Fame icon. Right. And you've got a lot of fun things to show for it. One thing you know? about the guys that have, like, they just have cheddar coming out of their ears, but yeah. then they don't spend it on stuff. Because what he's doing, he's not he's not collecting, he's curating. He's preserving. And so, like, yeah, he's preserving exactly stuff right. that otherwise... Like, what if the Forrest Gump bench was just at an auction and some douche right. bought it and was like, you know what, I want to turn this into, like, a shelf and yeah. it'll be my Forrest Gump shelf. It's like, no, he's, he's preserving that because when he's long gone, when we're all long gone, all these things are going to end up somewhere well, because he took care of it. And them. right through this wall right here, and I'll take you over there to see it if you haven't seen it already, is the Archie Bunker set. Mm, like that's that's the all in the family set that he just recently got about three or four months ago (laughs) right and that's fully you know set up in there um it but again he gets those things to tell the story right because there are people who want to destroy history both media history and hollywood history like it's easy to hate on disney right now because Mm. disney's kind of dug their own grave but disney didn't start out that way and contrary to what a lot of people think they know about disney's history most of that stuff is wrong because it's just wrong. And, and Glenn has collected a lot of stuff to be able to tell the real story of where these things come from. Like if you go over to the museum across the parking lot, it's pretty cool because he's got things that he believes one day they'll just ban and get rid of. So he started mm. buying different things from popular culture right now to put in like there. What? Like what kind of stuff? Uh, like uh, what was the stuff? Like Aunt Jemima bottles and things like that. Yeah. And, and, and so there were, there were various other toys and lunch boxes and things that you just that are going to go away because again they, they've canceled it out of culture well, and we'll think about the disney stuff because again they're they're kind of the easy target and they brought it on themselves but when you go back decades they couldn't miss yeah. and everything they released was like it went right from i don't know if i get the stuff right but it'll be like lion king and then it was aladdin and then it was pocahontas and it was just like hit 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 and then of course you know it's it's well documented at this point when they start talking about the things that they're talking about and thrusting right. things into their shows and so it's like when you have a dominant entertainment hegemon that's been around for that long, you can't judge the entirety of the organization based on the last few years. True. And so it's like if you're if you got a piece from the original like Snow White or something like that, someone can be like, "Oh, that's woke," because that that's <laughs> that's like us canceling something like that. It's like, no, no, no. That was when they were telling stories that right. everybody understood because they went multiple layers deep in our psyche and all that stuff. It's not the stuff now, and the, and the reason why they're drowning right now and they haven't had a, a big hit since Frozen or something like that is because of the stuff they're trying to infuse in it yeah. as opposed to just telling the stories that humanity yeah. gets. We know they're pushing an agenda. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the crazy thing. And they're struggling. I mean, like you took the, you take this, uh, what's the movie that just bombed the Marvel thing or whatever? And that's a Disney deal, right? And, well, didn't they and, also have like the animated like? Well, it, it's another like white guy's the bad guy. He's like the the evil. Chris yeah, Pine th- did the voice of, of the guy. I think it was called Wish. Wish. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, that also, was another one. Like most people don't even know what that is because yeah, that's a like, one. Bombed. It's another like Disney children's. <laughs> movie. I don't actually know the plot to that one. Yeah. All yeah. right. Was that the gay one? I don't, I don't think so. I think the probably. last one was the gay one. The one before that was a trans one, and this one was just terrible <laughs> on its own merits. So, well, Bob Bob Iger, I think I saw where he blamed the the dismal box office flop, which was this new Marvels thing, yeah. on COVID. He said it was because of COVID, and now people just want to want to watch your woke crap. Or or it could be. I, I'm surprised they didn't say it was climate change. Which, by the way, I grant you the best tweet after that house exploded in Virginia. Yeah. I, apparently, the algorithm showed needed me to see it immediately after you tweeted it. Yeah. And you're like, hey guys, let's like let's not jump to conclusions. Let's wait for some evidence to come out. Probably climate change. <laughs> and it's like a house explodes in Virginia, and it's yeah. just like, no, nah, it's probably because glaciers are melting. Yeah, I immediately put that out there. I couldn't miss the opportunity on that. That pissed a lot of people off. Which I'm here for. It, it was well done. Yeah. I I, I like that. I like to piss them off. Um, but no, I, I don't, you know, and people say, I've had people say about that Marvel movie, they're like, it wasn't woke. It wasn't woke at all. There was nothing woke about it. And I'm like, yep. First of all, I don't think people know what woke means anymore. Mm. 
and, and to me, woke means you're taking something that has been a traditional valued norm for generations, and now you're going to flop that. You're going to flip it over and say, okay, those norms don't matter anymore. Now we're going to create a reality in your imagination that flies in the face of all of that. So, so now uh, the women are going to do all these things that traditionally yeah. men were doing, or you know interracial couples are going to replace you know the you know normal same race couples and again it's not to say any of that stuff it's not to say women can't do these things or people can't marry other people from other races but you're trying to make like that's been the norm all along and if you talk about anything from the past well then you're a bigot well and we need to actually back it up even further because i think the most cogent definition of woke i've ever heard is from a pastor named lucas miles mm-hmm. it's wokeness is a higher consciousness of supposed systemic oppression so if you use that as basically your your north star your guiding light yeah all these things go down from that and so you have these traditionally masculine roles like i don't know protector provider like you know presiding over what you're doing in culture you know having dominion cultivating things mm. and then you give those roles to women and then it comes out in this like macabre weird thing that we're supposed to like and we're told if we don't like it that we're bigoted so you put out atomic blonde and you go wait a minute 120 pound girl is not gonna be able to punch 17 250 pound freak beast dudes in the face and not yeah. break her hands and but we're just supposed to just accept that now as like oh yeah that that's something that this girl could yeah. definitely do and then it's like if they force it down your throat and you throw it back up they're just like wait a minute the problem's with you it's like no it was the you know it was the poison pill you tried to give me from the beginning yeah perfect example mm-hmm. is those three fat black female cops in chicago we showed last week they couldn't subdue the oh one guy did you see that clip yes i thought it was four was it not four, it was four. how many did i say you yeah said it, it three. was four yeah it was four of them and it was like so this gets into a whole other thing because i mean there's a lot of cops there's there's guys that could not have four male cops you know actually right. cuff them but it's like right. when you have these issues when you have these people that clearly shouldn't be in the job to begin with what if that guy had murderous intent not just like ah you know i don't you're not taking me to jail but what if that guy was like i need to get away from you so i can do this harm to somebody in public it's like you're the sheepdog y'all are the sheepdogs that are supposed to protect the populace like if i'm not around because guess what if i'm not in my city which i'm not right now my wife and my boys are being protected by Mm -hmm. the police that are in that city if you have those people in the force i mean like Again, sometimes it's like, oh, I wish I knew the circumstances. No, we can see the circumstances. Yeah. You have four people that have no regard <laughs> or ability to do violence. And, yeah. you know, what are they supposed to do? But I'm supposed to give up my firearm. Oh, yeah, sure. In exchange for... And, you know, that's funny, Kyle, because uh, 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 that's a great point. You know, I'm supposed to wait on the police to show up. Right. Well, let's say the police show up and they're physically incapable of handling the situation. Right. I posted a meme the other day where it was like, okay, we're not supposed to have these pointing to guns because we have these pointing to police officers. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, I saw that meme, are yeah. we not supposed to have fire extinguishers because we have firefighters? That's right. But in this scenario, imagine your house is on fire. Fire team shows up, right? Fire department shows up. They got the sirens. They got the big trucks. No hoses. Yeah. It's like, all right, so they're going to be able to get a front row seat to watching all my memories uh, burn up. <laughs> and about my, the my dog's still inside. Get the dog. But it's like they, they have no capability at that point. And so when you put a police officer out there, uh, whether male or female, fat or gay or black or yeah. Latino, it doesn't matter. If you can't subdue a human being and hold mm. them there until help arrives or if you are the only hope, if you can't do what you're supposed to do, yeah. you're not doing right by the populace that you purported and raised your hand and said you'd protect. It's like, yeah. get out of here. We're going to talk about some more of that stuff. We're going to go to a break. I want to talk about men. I like talking about men with people like Kyle because we like we like alpha males. I mean, not like that, but you know what I'm talking about. No, yeah. You, yeah. you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Hey, guys, uh, you know, for a long time here at Blaze TV, we've been fortunate to partner with the team over at Relief Factor. About 10 years ago, they brought an unknown anti-inflammatory to the marketplace that they tested in Seattle, which is their hometown, and it showed a remarkable ability to reduce pain for a whole lot of different types of chronic ailments. I take Relief Factor. I love it because it's an all-natural alternative to pain medications that I trust to keep me pain-free. You know, inflammation is not only the chief cause of pain, but it's also a factor in many other diseases, and you can trust Relief Factor a lot of times to... To, to work to keep your inflammation markers in check. Uh, hundreds of thousands of people order Relief Factor every month. Uh, three quarters of those people keep on reordering it because it works for them. And you can get a trial pack right now, 1995. It's a three week quick start and see if it works for you. See if it reduces the pain. If so, you keep on going. Uh, get it by going to relieffactor.com. You can call them on the phone, 800, the number four relief, 800 for relief, or just check them out, relieffactor.com. And hang tight. We'll be right back. <laughs> Uh, 
Uh, you know what? I love it when uh, I love That's it heavy. when Kyle comes around because he always brings me tequila. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, here's the thing. So last time I was here, I was like, all right, because uh, I know a lot about scotch because I'm a real man. Right. But then you're yeah, like, I don't you. drink scotch. You know, I like, you know, f cute things like tequila. And I was like, crap, I don't know anything about tequila. So I bought the <laughs> cutest bottle. Right. So I bought that Classe Azul. Yeah. But this time I was like, OK, I got to change it up because last time it didn't come in a box. It was just the fancy little thing. So I don't even know if that's good. It's good. But it looks good. I promise you it's good. Maestro Double 50 Get Cristalino. It. I thought they said Cristiano for a second. It I was could. Like, is that Cristiano Ronaldo's? Cristalino. It is sense. an Anejo. Look how beautiful that bottle is, right? Look there. at that. Look at that thing. I there. mean, last time we actually toasted while we were sitting here on the set. And we well, were we doing will it today, lunch. too. We okay. will today, too. Let's get it. Look at that. Um, that's beautiful. And that is a clear Anejo. Typically, they're not. Uh, that, I mean, that almost looks like a, like a Blanco there. Beautiful bottle. You know why they make tequila bottles so wild shaped? Mm mm. Because you've heard the phrase top shelf tequila. Yeah. So what they started doing was they started putting them on, in bottles that would not fit on a shelf. Yeah, there were some bottles that were like twice the size of that. Yeah, they would have those big tall, like you talk about that Casa Azul, they make them in the tall bottle. So that those bottles, they had to put up on the top ha shelf. Oh, okay. So it was a marketing hack. Okay. And they put them up on the top shelf. And people said, well, I'll have the top shelf tequila because these tall bottles don't fit on a normal bar shelf. There you go. So you got to put them up top. Yeah. But uh, thank you, buddy. Thanks yeah, you look like you knock I'm, someone out with that. Just, you know, if anyone comes in here, like, I'll distract them with the this hat. Is, this, I mean, that's a bowling pin. Yeah, that's right. It's a bowling pin. Look at that thing. Um, we'll save some for you guys. And I do, you know, I Maybe love... turn your uh, mic on so we can hear the laughter. I do love a little scotch uh, every now and then. I like a good scotch. Uh, picky on the scotches. But I, and I had to cut whiskey out a few years ago because of the, the gout and stuff. I was That and I was drinking way too much of it. Yeah. The, and... Uh, That'll make gout the least of your problems if you drink too true. much of it. That's true. But I'll, I'll still have a, a decent scotch. Um, you got you got a go-to favorite right now, scotch-wise? So, uh, I'll say that if there's a there's one scotch that if it's not on my bar, like something's wrong, and that's Lagavulin 16. And mm -hmm. so of all the scotches, because there's six regions of Scotland where you get scotch from, so it's Highland, yeah. Lowland, Campbell, Campbelltown, uh, Islands, Isla, and uh, another one that I can't remember. But uh, Isla is this little island off the coast of Scotland, and they dry their barley with peat moss. So that's where you get all the like smoky yep. taste and all that. And a lot of people don't like that, but I'm typically smoking cigars when I'm drinking scotch. And so, like, Lagavulin 16 is like the perfect one that every single liquor store has in mm. stock. And so that's the one that if it's not So on the you bar, like that peaty flavor. Yeah. Like yeah. that's, if I'm having one, cause I don't, I don't drink very often. Like, you know, I may drink once or twice a month and have one or two. And so if I'm having one, like I don't want to have, like I love Glen Morangies and Glen Grant and all these that are a little bit lighter. Yeah. That's what I would introduce, you know, non scotch drinkers too. Cause before the pandemic, I used to teach like whiskey tasting classes. And so I would like right. give people that have never had anything other than Jack and Coke, like these really nice scotches to help them figure out their palates. But it's just like, if I'm having one and I'm having a cigar with it, like I don't want it to be light and, and fruity and all that type of thing. I want it to be like, you know, band-aids covered battleships, like, you know, you know, rolled in tar. Like that's kind of what I, <laughs> that's what I like to do with my free time. Well, that, you know, I like the 18 year Glimmerangi and, um, I like the, the 14 year Balvini, the Caribbean cast, mm -hmm. you know, that's a good go-to for me. So I, cause I don't like the real smoky peaty deal um my buddy kevin wade he kept bringing me you know those whiskeys from japan which they don't use the peat but they they make it very smoky it's the exact same process like yeah. they early uh 1900s they sent a couple of chemists over to university of glasgow and had yeah. them like figure it out and then they came back and made yamazaki and all these other ones yeah but another one i will tell you for people that don't like scotch people that are listening to this are like this this is ridiculous i don't want to hear it glenn morangy signet Mm. I've given that whiskey to more people that said, I don't like scotch. Don't put it in my glass. Really? Now, it's it's harder to find. It's way more expensive than it used to be and should be probably. But anything by Glen Morangy, like Glen Morangy, Orangy, it's, it's more on that kind of citrusy side. Mm -hmm. But it is like super duper crowd pleaser. And so if you want a fancy bottle that'll I'll look cool on your shelf, that's the one. I'll go find it. I've seen it. I've never tried it. Because, uh, again, I've, I got stuck with the 18. Creature of habit. Dude, it's great, though. The extremely rare. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. I uh, and I, I flipped over to tequila. I didn't like. I, I can't drink vodka. Not a good result. Uh, and, emotionally uh, or all of physically? The above. Okay, yeah. All the above. Not a good result with vodka. Fair enough. Um, and uh, but I'll have uh, the tequila. I started drinking the tequila. Try to keep everything clear as possible. 
Um, that's beautiful for an anejo to be as clear as that is. I'm excited. We're I do the same it. thing, but the with my skin. Gonna try I try to keep it as clear. <laughs> yeah, you're translucent. Transparent. You want to keep it. You yeah. know, these people don't understand. It's like I'm probably getting a sunburn right now from like these lights, but it's just like, hey, you know, is it, you, yeah. there's no tricks with me. There's no mystery. It's like you can see directly through my skin. I'm very transparent yeah, you're as a person. Yeah, yeah. and always. I uh, so your show Undone in Life and it's killing it right now. Yeah, you, you or, overtook Joel Osteen on the chart this morning. I couldn't wait to text you that. So what's funny That's about funny. that? Is, and I saw it before you sent it. I saw the deal. So last night I was number twelve on the charts and on Apple Podcasts, and I was ahead of Stephen Furtick, which was great. But I was right behind Joel Osteen. And so I was like, in your category is is faith, is religion and spirituality. Re I think okay, is, gotcha, is the category. Gotcha. And so I was like, okay. I've never tried the name it and claim it thing, but like now, <laughs> now's that time. And so it's like, okay, I name and I claim the number yeah. 11 spot on this, on these charts here. And you know, so the, those are the rules that Joel Osteen taught me is that if you just name it and claim it <laughs> up to and including his house and his cars, it will be given yeah. to you. And I woke up this morning and wouldn't you know it? Prosperity gospel works. Nailed it. Because I was number eleven and he was number twelve. He gave up his spot in the kingdom just so I could have he did. it. And so he did. That poor guy. I hope he's going to be okay. He's going to have to like dry his tears with all the money that's he'll in his wallet. He'll probably walls bathroom, have. But. You know, he probably he'll he'll bust open a wall and find a stash yeah. of cash yeah. there at the church. That makes perfect sense. There at Lakewood, and um, he'll have to write another book. Poor guy. I don't know how he's going to make it. He's not going to recover. I don't know that that it's going to work for him, dude. I, you know, I don't even want to get into these guys. I could easily do that. I don't want to do that. I, I you know. I appreciate what you do so much because, again, yeah, and I'll tell you, your show, when you had me on, I still mm. have people, however long ago that's been, a year and a half, two years almost, you had yeah. me on the show, your show. I still have people who will send me clips from that show. It was a great from our conversation. conversation. Yeah. We had a good time talking well, about kingdom stuff. It was good. Well, and the thing was is your interview is a perfect example of, well, let me back up. When I prepare an interview, so if someone wrote a book, I'm going to be one of the few hosts that actually reads the entire book. Right. And then I will ask questions according to that. And then if they say something, I'm like, well, okay, well, you talk about that in chapter three, but in chapter seven, you say this and this. It's because I read the book and I actually engage with the content. But I prepare my questions as if you're just going to answer my questions, mm -hmm. like straight shooter, because then I can go here to here to here to here. And then I end up, you know, having weave some sort of narrative, like for our conversation. But with you, second or third question in i just scrapped all the questions i was going to ask <laughs> because i thought we were going to be super political i thought we were going to you know talk about comedy and country music and blah 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 and all that stuff yeah. but we got into some theological topics and we got into your background because that's obviously a big part of your background that you know some people don't really know how big of a part of your background right. that is but it's like you know it's a judging the book by its cover type of a thing but also it's like when you've got the cowboy hat on you you've got you know the persona and you got the stage and that is a, an elevated part of who you are yeah. but then there's this other part that doesn't work as well at a comedy show where there's music involved and so that's that's really where we we went and it was it was a great conversation i had a blast with it that's that's my favorite type of conversation to have because it's meaningful yeah you know it's not pablum it's not just stuff that you just swallow and spit out it, it's something you can ruminate for a little while so I had a good time, and I appreciate that. But I'll still have people who say, you know, I shared that episode with people. And this is kudos to you as a host because you do such a fine job with it of, of letting people have that conversation that needs to be had. Mm. And, and the cool thing is there were people who would never be listening to the faith and spirituality net, uh, network of podcasts, right. category of podcasts, and they were listening to that. And they were like, yeah, we got a lot out of that. So well, that's fun. what's happening right now with why my show is kind of shot into the charts again and is doing all that because I went on Mike Glover's show. Mm -hmm. So he owns Fieldcraft Survival up in Utah. And so this is a former Green Beret and CIA uh, operator. And, you know, he goes and he does this preparedness stuff now. So he teaches like, you know, close quarters combat courses, but also has a book called Prepared where you, you know, figure out how you can like, you know, can your own food and, you know, be ready in a, uh, active shooter scenario. And, you know, if, uh, anyway, he, he's that guy. Right. And so he has a lot of operators that'll come on his show or he'll talk about something like, Hey, if the grid is knocked down, here's some things you need to have ready to go. But we get into this conversation about masculinity. Like, what does it mean? What does it mean in modernity? What, if, what if you're the guy that can seal carries, you can, you know how to fight, you've got chickens, you've got jars of pickles in the basement, you've got all this stuff ready to go. But if you haven't figured out who Christ is to you, it's like you missed the thread somewhere, and it's like <laughs> right. you prepared all the ways that you could prepare 
for this world, but you've given no yeah. regard for the next one. And you're no surviving one, everything but eternity. Right. And so it's like, yeah, you, you just gathered a bunch of materials for the next chimp that's going to take it after he <laughs> lops your head off. And so it's like, right. that's really where the kind of the nexus of the conversation was. And so his audience is preppers and, you know, four wheel riding guys and, you know, like guys that like to do all that kind of stuff. And so they get exposed to this faith content. And they're like, wait a minute, you can be godly and manly. I didn't know that that was yeah. like a category. And so that, I mean, that's, that's why. One of our uh, mutual friends, Chad Robichaud. The man. Uh, which you were supposed to be heading down to do his show. Yeah, what the heck, Chad? And like, why'd you take right. my invitation away? So I it's know. okay. I'll be so there next year. he bumped you out to February. Uh, Chad's, <laughs> Chad's such a good dude. He texted yeah. me the other day. And um, anyway, I won't get into that. But one of the big things he wrestled with was how do you be a man of God and a warrior? Right. How can you be a Christian and a warrior at the same time? Because, I mean, as an as a eight-time deployed Force Recon Marine— and who's also taken himself over to some wild places, yep. you know, getting people out of Afghanistan mm -hmm. and things like that. Uh, how do you wrestle with that? So, you know, that's that's the crux of the of the catharsis, if you will, of the the paradoxical wrestling we all have. How do you mm -hmm. be a strong, masculine man and still be a, a tender warrior? I guess in the grand scheme of things. I tell you what, hang yeah. on, I want to get into that. Yeah, let's, let's go, go to a break because that's a big topic, and I want to talk about it some. Um, and it's one of my favorite topics. And so anyway, uh, all right, guys. Hey, listen, it's uh, that time of year again. All the Thanksgiving decorations, you put them up. The Christmas decorations are out. You're looking for something to kind of get you into the holiday season. Well, this is a little bit different stretch from what Kyle and I were talking about. Uh, I'm going to get you over into the whiskeys, not the scotches in this case, but why don't you try a glass of Fox and Odin whiskey? Uh, they sent me a couple of bottles of that, and i got to say it's impressive. So if you've worked hard today, you earned a little relaxation, put your feet up by the fire, and uh, just enjoy the life that God has given you. Sip a little bit of that Fox and Eden. Listen, this holiday season, let the perfectly blended spirits complement the view that you're engaged in, whether it's a fire out by the, you know, out, out back in the woods, sitting around the bonfire, or maybe it's sitting around the Christmas tree with family. Celebrate it. Enjoy it to the fullest. They're a double gold award-winning Fox and Odin Craft American Whiskey, and they really are the spirit of the holidays. You need to check them out. You can buy it online. They'll ship it to your door. You go over to foxandodin.com. That's Fox and O-D-E-N. Dot com. Use promo code CHAD. I spell it Chad. They'll even get you free shipping. So head over to foxandodin.com. Use Chad and please drink responsibly. We'll be right back. So you, you we've talked about this before. You kind of set out on a journey to kind of reach men. I mean, look, we are men. We might as well. Yeah. Right. And there's something about... Uh, Men have been under attack. Women have been under attack. You know, the, the sexes, the genders, the roles, all of these things have been under attack. And, and if you say anything that sounds halfway stereotypical, well, again, you're labeled. Sure. You're going to be a misogynist. You're going to be a bigot. You're going to be all those different things. I'm pretty unapologetic about that. You're unapologetic about being who you are. And I don't think there's anybody better to reach men where they are than men who are real men who are willing to be a little bit vulnerable mm. you know talk about that a little bit i mean what what's what's the role that we need to play in in getting a message out to men so it it's the perfect question the perfect question because of the word you use vulnerable because this is where most men go most men have kind of two paths that they go the people that have bought the cultural lie that masculinity in and of itself is dangerous and toxic mm. and we should we should root it out in ourselves and in society like you you get that road but then the other side you have the guys where it's it's all beef jerky and biceps and you know if my truck's not covered in mud then i'm not a man and it's like mm -hmm. it's the machismo side and it's like neither side is ki killing it right now it's the same thing like with the story of the prodigal son it's like i've always been team older brother because i was like screw that younger brother he should die with those pigs but yeah. it's like the older brother's just as lost but it's yeah. it's a different category of loss he's lost in his religiosity i guess in his stick to itiveness but that's the thing is most men have never gotten the thread correctly. And part of it has to do with our post-Christian culture that we live in. And the people that are still hanging around in the churches, they're being mm. discipled by these effeminate pastors, right? These True. effeminate shepherds that are also trying to kind of tamp down the masculinity, tamp down the testosterone a little bit. Hey, man, you're talking a lot about the line of Judah. That's kind of scary. Lamb of God's a lot cuter because the Lamb of God is this, you know, soft featured Danish guy that walked around 2000 years ago telling people how cute <laughs> they look in their tunics. Like that's like the guy, right? And so <clears throat> the society has been part of it, but 
It's the same thing that Eric Metaxas talked about in his book, Letter to the American Church. There would be no Holocaust. There would have been no World War II. There would have been no Third Reich if a few thousand more German pastors had stood up against the rise of the Nazi party and said, no, we're, we're not getting behind this. Like, this yeah. is an atheistic regime, and we're calling it out. But they didn't. They were silent. And then we have all the horrors that we saw in the 20th century. And so it, it's it's not... There's more to it than that, but it, uh, that's, you know, there's not less than that. I, uh, you know, uh, I, I've got a church that I go to, you know, that I love, and I love the pastor there, and because he's just a dude. Yeah. You know, he's just a dude. He's real, He's he, but he is vulnerable, and, and you feel God, you sense God moving. It, it, there's an anointing on his ministry, right? And you know that's happening because you've been in enough places where it ain't. Oh, yeah. It ain't. For sure. And a couple of weeks ago, my girlfriend, she said, um, do you mind going, can we go to a different church this morning? She goes, I, there's something going on for the kids. And she said, would you mind? So I met her over there, and I won't say which church it was or where it was, but uh, one of the teaching pastors came out. It was a woman, and uh, she was going to deliver a message. And it was Red fair. Flag. It was, Red it was, flag. I was like, here we go. Yep. And, I, and I'm not, listen, I, I, listen, I'll be fair. I'm not a huge fan of woman, women authors. I, because again, women don't speak my language. Sure, there's a difference. It's not that it's not that women can't do it or whatever. It's that women don't speak my language, and they're not writing for you. That's yeah, the other thing. Exactly, you they don't I mean? speak my language. So I'm not. I'm not. I've never have been big into women authors. Uh, I don't really want to hear. I mean, I've heard women teach lessons and things like that, where I was like, okay, yeah, I can get something from that. That was great, mm. but I don't want to sit under that consistently. It's not what I'm. It's not what I'm called to do. And. Uh, I, I'm a man. I want to hear a man rightly divide the word of God. And I mean, not give me a motivational speech. No. I want to hear an interpretation of the scripture, and I want you to apply it to my life. But at the end of the day, I want to hear the kingdom of God, and I want to hear the gospel, which is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, unapologetically. Sure. Yep. So <laughs> that's what I want to go and hear. So she comes out there, and it's one of these, it's a church where, you know, everybody's sitting in there, and it's almost like, it's like IBM you know, it's 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 corporate, and, and then there's these little risers around the thing where everybody's just kind of sitting on the floor with their feet down on the next riser below them. And I was like, almost like going to a Young Life gathering. Okay. She comes out there, and she starts talking about how we need to better manage our time on social media and how we need to make sure that we're controlling our time in front of our screens. And I'm like... Which is good advice. Um, it's great advice. But not for that venue. It's great advice, but that ain't, that's not going to bring men to repentance. It's not going to bring men to the feet of the king who is going to split the mountains in his return, mm -hmm. who at the sound of his voice is going to make the rocks cry out for mercy. That, that's, not, I, that's what I want to hear. I want to walk away with the fear of God. I want to have a nature of mercy and grace, understanding justice and judgment. And, and, it's like, and you say, well, you're sounding critical. I am yeah, critical. And you mean to be. Because as you said in the earlier segment, we do all these things about this life, but what about the life to come? Sure. Because as much fun as we have and the jokes we make and the ridicule and the, all these things that people look at and say, oh, well, you're not. Listen, I get it. I get it. You guys are so heavenly minded. Y'all have got it all together. I don't. Mm. I'm on this journey. I need men to speak into my life, right? And, and I was like, I walked out of there and she goes, what'd you think? And she already knew. I said, well, I'm not going to kick the dust off my shoes as I leave, but I ain't coming back to this. Yeah. Because I only have so many times on this earth where I can get together with the people of God, and hmm. this ain't going to be where it's at. Well, and I think, I mean, that you can get into a conversation about egalitarianism versus complementarianism. She should have never even been in that pulpit, like delivering that message. But then let's just talk about the message itself. It's this modern seeker sensitive model where it's like okay here's a ted talk let's sprinkle a few bible verses over the top of it so we can keep our tax exempt status and then <clears throat> it's spiritual skittles which is what i call it so you get your little rock concert you get your life lessons right and then you feel so good about that until about the time when you pull out of the parking lot and yeah. get back on the main road and then you kind of lose the thread and it's because yeah. it's not expository preaching it's not I'll back up to a great example of a manly pastor that has an enormous church. Joby Martin is one of my best friends. He's out of Florida, Church of 1122, multi-site church. And he checks most of the boxes of a lot of these guys that are kind of like seeker sensitive, mm -hmm. you know, multi-site, like, you know, and you're just like, ah, he's just another one of those guys. The problem for people that would categorize him that way is he exposits the scripture. He sits in a deer blind every Monday 
And when it's still dark out, and as soon as the light comes up, he opens up his Bible app and he says, God, they're, they're your sheep. I'm just your shepherd. Mm-hmm. What do you want me to communicate to your flock today or this week for his sermon? And he said for 12 years running, God has given him a sermon, a sermon that he doesn't owe Joby Martin, mind you, but he gives him a sermon. And so he is just basically saying he is a reflection of the father. He's like, if you're looking at me, I'm going to reflect you off and put your attention back on the father. And the gospel is the thing that undergirds everything he's talking about. Not how to be a better guy in 10 days, not how to, you know, lose that bad habit in five weeks. It's not any of that type of kitschy stuff. It's not a John Maxwell book. It's like, here's a tangible way that the gospel can work for you. And you can get into the theology of how does, does God save us or do we choose him? All that kind of stuff. And that's not necessarily important for right now, but it's like, when you're sitting under teaching mm-hmm. that is vapid, eventually you you will come to ruin because it's like they're not keeping what should be central, central, yeah. and that's the gospel. Well, I, I, I equate it to, and again, there's a time and place for good advice. Yeah. There's a time and place for motivation. Mm-hmm. There's all, it, it, That's like you go to school. You know, you, this kid goes to high school. He's got, what, six periods all day long. One of those periods may be PE. They go in there and play volleyball or whatever. Well, then he's got to go back to calculus class. If if you're trying to if you're trying to mix those two together so that everything feels like PE, you're not learning anything. No. There's a time no. and place for PE, but there's also the time and place for physics and calculus. And mm-hmm. and, those, and so all I'm saying is there's there's a time and a place for that. But man, at some point in time, the American church, which has been highly feminized, and I don't mind saying that, mm-hmm. it's been highly feminized. We'll talk about it some more in the next segment. Um, is in a lot of trouble because in the people, the people who have embraced that as such, and they don't even know they're doing it, I don't think. No. But it turns a lot of men off. And a lot of guys, they're like, I don't know why this pisses me off and turns me off, but I don't want anything to do with it. And I think that's a big part of why. Hang tight. We're going to take a break. Um, listen, guys, Kyle and I got a mutual friend, and uh, he's a good buddy. His name's Phil Robertson. And um, if you want to see a story of redemption, I mean, you think you know Phil from things like Duck Dynasty and, and the Robertson family and all the crazy antics they've done. You don't know Phil Robertson. Uh, there's a story out there. It's a movie called The Blind, the true story of the Robertson family. It's now available for purchase right here on Blaze TV. And let me tell you something. Phil was a mess. And if you've made a mess of your life or you know somebody that you love that's in a dark place and somebody needs to see a story of redemption, this is a great movie with a great lesson. And it's got a lot of hope built into it. The Blind takes you on the incredible journey through the life of Phil Robertson. It gives you an intimate look in the man behind, you know, who we know who we know him as today, the triumphs, the values, but also the loss and the failures. These are the things that shaped him into the man he is. Now, we didn't make the blind it's not a blaze media production so uh but phil's a part of the blaze tv family we want to make sure you have the opportunity to stream it right here own it right here uh we can't include it as part of the subscription because we don't own it ourselves so if you'd rather purchase it from you know apples or amazon we don't want you to do that make sure you get it from a place that uh, shares your values like the blaze so don't miss the opportunity to own the blind phil robertson's story blaze tv buy it today blaze tv.com slash the blind it's 1999 blaze tv.com slash the blind hang tight be right back all right let's pour a little bit of this is it uh, time yes yeah, time let's go and i feel like I've, i feel like we just did a science project here with this oh, yeah. giant beaker Whoa, baby. Whoa. Dude, are you trying to kill me? Well, it, it comes out it's quick, man. Okay. It comes out quick. I don't know the etiquette on tequila, but, you know, well, do, you, do you swirl it or do you just... I think you just go with it. All right, give it a little sip. Cheers, brother. Absolutely. Right, Thank man. you very much. To the future. The way to my heart. Through the future. Oh. Mm. Mm-hmm. Delicious. It's pretty good stuff. All right. It's got a, it's like, it's, it kind of It kind of gets a tad sweeter as it goes. Mm-hmm. I like it. A little smoky at the beginning. Yeah. It's got, a long, it's got a long finish on it, which if you're it's a Scotch a person, if you, if you drink something and it disappears, that means it doesn't have a finish. This one will this one will last a little bit. Roll that around on your tongue. I like that because it gets, you know, sometimes you put tequila in there and it's like sweet right up front, especially with an Anejo. And then just, and it's like, and then it's like, mm, that's like a, that's like a little syrupy. This is not. Oh, that's a, that's a good sipper right there. You're welcome, Mr. Prather. <laughs> you're welcome, America. That's right. That's a, uh, that's uh, Maestro Dobel 50 Cristalino Extra Anejo In tequila. the beaker bottle. In the beaker bottle. 
so let's talk about that. The, the, the feminization, if you will, of the mm-hmm. American church. Um, we, we, we've heard for generations, well, that religion stuff, that's mama's stuff. You know, right. grandma will take you to church, take yeah. you to Sunday school. Where, where are the men? What's going on? So I, re- I recorded an episode. So I had, I had two vocal cord surgeries this year. And yeah. so that was kind of you like sound a, good, a long ordeal. I appreciate it. Um, I mean, we were having to reckon with this year. My wife and I were talking about, like, if I lose my ability to speak, like, what what am I going to do, like, yeah. for work? And how can we keep on Donald Life going? And luckily, we haven't had to do anything like that up till now. But, like, one of my first episodes back was called Country Music Theology. And this was after that uh, redheaded guy went viral for, you know, singing in the woods. Oliver and all Anthony. That. Yeah, Oliver yeah. Anthony. And, you know, you grow, I grew up in Oklahoma, so if you listen to country music and occasionally vote Republican, you go to heaven, right? Because, like, God <laughs> is, is super big on those things. That's the route. And, if, and if you drive a Chevy, not a Ford. Right. But, like, those are, those are <laughs> the out. things that you kind of get. But then we get into these these modern churches, which we've already talked about a lot. They've been very, very feminized. They've been very streamlined, right? So it's more of the uh, the model of franchises, right? How many franchises can we open of yeah. this Burger King as opposed to making sure that, you know, we're a solid yeah. foundation. But every church, Chad, may as well have a blinking neon sign in the lobby that says, men, this is not for you. Like, we don't have you in mind when we're coming up with the sermon content. We don't have you in mind when we're picking the songs. So if they have homoerotic lyrics, just deal with it. You know, we yeah. don't care. We don't have you in mind when we're the key, when we're picking the key that we're singing in. Mm, good point. And here's the thing with most guys, Chad. So some guys are emotionally unavailable. Some guys don't really have the wherewithal to know where they are at on the spectrum of feelings, right? And then you have guys that are understanding of all those things. But regardless of your predisposition, if you feel like you are not needed in a place, you will go some other place where you feel needed. Right. So in a relationship, if you're in a marriage where you don't feel like you're needed, you're probably going to stray away from your commitment before God, and then you're going to you know, take the secretary out on a date. But then the other side of it is true, is if I'm inside the church, and all the volunteers are women, and all the opportunities are more feminine and caretaker in nature, and they don't need men of action to, to go and to have dominion over whatever project they're doing, yeah. well, guess what the men are going to go do? They're going to go to the shooting range. They're going to mm-hmm. go to, to play another round of golf. They're going to get ready for their fourth fantasy football draft. They're going to go, you know, sit you know, at their laptop with their pants around their ankles like a real hero and jerk off looking at porn. They're going to play video games. They're going to do something where they can dominate, Yeah. right? And pastors just are like, they're cool with it. And you can tell by how they deliver two messages a year, Mother's Day message and Father's Day message. Mother's Day message is women are the best. They basically, women leave there feeling like they're not sinners. Mm. but men go there and it's like where y'all been for the last year you're here on father's day and you're not doing this and you're not doing that it's like pastor some of that is your fault right because you have set up an environment where masculinity has been stamped out from the beginning and so that's why i've kind of changed even in since the last time i was on your show i i always get asked about men's ministry hey kyle we, we want a more vibrant men's ministry we want more men to show up to our prayer breakfast and we want more men to volunteer blah blah and all that and i used to try to help churches and and organizations with that but now i'm like you know what i don't care about your men's ministry i don't even care if you have one you know what i care about i care about if your church is man friendly Mm. that's what i care about so are the volunteers are the volunteer opportunities something that a man would naturally want to do are you forcing men into circles eyeball to eyeball before they've done anything shoulder to shoulder Mm -hmm. are you singing songs that make a man feel like he wants to storm the gates of hell or cuddle with Jesus. And so it's like, if you start focusing on those things, I think a lot of the other stuff is just going to fall into place. And then you will have men that are leading their families. They will take headship seriously. They will catechize their children. And then guess what? You're not going to have to flame them every Father's Day. You're just going to have to be <laughs> like, hey, fellas, keep it going. Let's get it. Yeah. Yeah. That's one of the things that um, uh, there are certain churches out there that do that and do it well, mm. and, and they don't get caught up in the religious trappings, if you will, of, mm. oh, we got to dress a certain way to go to church. We've got to – and I know some people out there that, that go to the next level with the whole warrior mindset with their worship of, of Jesus as a warrior king, and we're going right. to remind everybody on, a, on the daily that this is what – but we, we, it's problematic, in this, and it's it's starting to show in in again we've created this apologetic atmosphere in society yeah. and culture where everybody's got to apologize for being men and you oh, know. I'm so sorry I raised my voice I'm so sorry I got so fervent about that issue and it's it's the tone police man like you oh, hear that all the time people it's pissed like, off at me for the last segment where I said uh, talking about the girl that came out there and gave the message I'm not I'm not judging her intentions or anything else I'm just telling you that ain't the place where I want to be right. that's that's not what I'm where I want to be sitting. 
when underneath that the way people can not have to reckon with your message chat or my message on my show or any shows that are similar to it is by saying i just don't like your tone <laughs> you know what your message isn't so bad but your tone's kind of offensive mm -hmm. and so it's that type of atmosphere that breeds the exact feeling that we are fighting against mm -hmm. and so it's like i understand I can't change the way my face looks like, well, I could get on the Dylan Mulvaney track, but we don't have to go down that road. But it's like, I can't change how intense I look. Right. So yeah. I can, I can wear a softer palleted shirt and I can do all those different things. But at the end of the day, reckon with my words, because if all you hear is anger or all you hear is pointedness and that's what you want to focus on, it's convenient for you because then you don't have to reckon with yeah. my words. And so it's like, if you reckon with my words, they're either true or not true. And that either requires something of you or it doesn't. Yeah, people don't like that decision making no, process. They don't want all. that challenge where suddenly, and I've always said living things change uh, or, or living things grow, growing things change, and changing things challenge us. Mm. And so, because if good. it's alive, it's going to grow. If it grows, it's going to change. When I was a baby, people like to kiss my feet. Nobody wants to kiss my feet now because living things grow and growing things change, <laughs> and changing things challenge us. Yeah. And, and, and I can't find anybody to kiss my feet. Because that's a challenge. <laughs> it's because of the gout. It, it's a lot of things going on. Yeah. That, I don't wear socks, you know, in these tennis <laughs> shoes. There's a lot going on. and uh, But that's life. It should be a constant challenge. I say all the time, uh, we go to a quick break, but I say the two places where you ought to be the most challenged is when you walk into a room where a comedian is doing work or you walk into a room where a preacher is doing work. Mm. Both of those places should stretch you a little bit. Right. And uh, what you choose to walk out of there with, most people – in the church, there was, oh, I want him to motivate me. I want to feel good about myself when I walk out. You know, you feel you should feel convicted. You Imagine should. saying that in the in the Middle Ages, like, oh, I don't want the priest to be the priest. I don't want the the, yeah. the Joker to be the Joker. I want them to be what I want them to be. It wouldn't even made sense. Yeah, not a bit. All right, hang tight. We'll be right back. So the podcast is Undaunted Life. The brand is an Undaunted Life, right? Uh, just Undaunted Life. Undaunted Life. Yeah. And so um, you search that out, you'll find the podcast yep. where podcasts are offered. I'm telling you guys, you, you, need, you need to be following Kyle's podcast. It's a good one. You do a good job with it. You don't get the recognition, I think, that you should be getting. And your podcast is doing well, don't get me wrong, but it should be doing a whole lot more. Well, yeah, because again, it, people don't know what they don't know about. So right. go find it. Well, even when I had tens of listeners, you know, back when we started this thing, yeah. it's like, I have an audience of one. I'm going to work as unto the Lord. I give the same level of prep uh, then as I do now, whether it's yeah. a small guest, big guest, you know, small topic I'm talking about, big topic. It's like, God needs to be honored with what I'm doing. And, and that sounds kind of kitschy, right? Real convenient. That sounds like a church, you know, youth group answer. But it's like, it's it's really the truth. So if you like it and you want to yeah. keep listening, go for it. <clears throat> yeah. My mentor, spiritual father, Wade Trimmer, back when I was pastoring a church of like 40 people, he said, I want you to preach every week like you're preaching to 4,000. Light it up. Yep. Prepare like it's 4,000 people. That's right. And and <laughs> you know what? There was growth and it was life and it was cool. And you're going to have to give an account someday for how you shepherded that flock when they were under your control. True. And uh, that's different, you know, my my buddy Joby, he's like, "Hey, I'm I'm the I'm the pastor, you're more like the prophet, you're John the Baptist. I'm yeah. the guy that's going to have to yank you back a few times yeah. and be like, "No more grenades today, Kyle, maybe save them for next month." But yeah. that's the thing. We all have our role to play and we're going to have to give an account. Yeah. All right, we'll go check it out. And uh, make sure you're following Kyle on uh on Undaunted Life on all the socials That's right. and uh, Instagram. He's got some great content on there. And he is he is prophetic. He doesn't pull any punches. So I appreciate that about you. And thanks for the tequila, man, after my own heart. You don't want it, but I want it. And you did that. You, you... Well, and thanks for the hat. I'm not, I'm yeah, not going to be giving it back to you. It's crazy it looks good talk. on me. Look at it. Let's I'm going to beat his ass. We'll be back <laughs> tomorrow. Love you. God bless you. Bye. <laughs>